teams, groups, teams, groups. Which way to go? <laughs> it's time to learn. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Andy here, great to see you again and I really appreciate you stopping by and I hope you're staying safe in all this kind of craziness. This week it's the turn of teams versus groups or groups versus teams, which is which? I, I, I know, I don't know if you're anything like me but I do get confused with it all, don't you? So what I thought I would do is cut through the murk, cut through the mist, and we'll talk about exactly what groups are, exactly what teams are, and how they're related to each other, because they really are related. So I'm gonna take you through the basics of creating the groups, and then I'm gonna talk about all the administration of groups versus teams. All right, so just to remind you, if you've not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe and click on that bell so that you won't risk, miss uh, rather any future postings. Okay, and also I love your comments and your questions, so get them down below, and I'll do my very best uh, to answer them for you. And also, if you do like the video, give me a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Okay, so without any more jibber jabber, let's jump into the demo and then I'll come back at the end and we'll round it all up. Okay, enjoy. So here we are in Microsoft 365 and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down into the 365 Admin Center here. Now for this part of the demo, I'm gonna work in a couple of different portals. So um, hopefully it doesn't confuse you too much. I'm going to go into show all and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to come into Azure Active Directory. Now, just to kind of set the scene, um, this is a demo portal that I'm using and um, it's a, a US based tenant. Okay. Um, now, I'm often asked, Andy, um, you've gone into Azure Active Directory, but you're also in the admin center as well. Well, first of all, you should know that they are one and the same. So my users here in the Microsoft 365 admin center are exactly the same as my users here in the Azure Active Directory admin center. So it's exactly the same. Which portal do I, would I use, Andy? It's entirely up to yourself. There are six and a half a dozen. There are things that you can do in the 365 portal uh, that you can't do in the Azure portal. And there are things that are vice versa. Okay. So in this session, what we're going to talk about is really collaboration. And there's a lot of confusion about groups and teams. All right. So what I want to do is kind of clear the mist away from that confusion. So here in the admin center, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, uh, just going to roll that up, and I'm going to come into teams and groups. Now, recently updated, we now have um, what we've got is active teams and groups here. Um, now, if that doesn't confuse you anymore, I don't know what will. Um, but we've also got deleted groups here, and we've got shared mailboxes here. So, and it's all about collaboration. So the easiest way to start this demo is by showing you everything from the ground up. What do we mean by that collaboration? All right. So for this, I'm going to start with absolutely zero collaboration. So I'm going to come here into Azure Active Directory and I'm going to go into groups here. Now, when you create a group in Azure AD, you can see that this is the groups portal and everything looks good. What I want to do here is I want to create a new group. Now, when you create a new group here, it gives you the choice. Do you want to create a security group or do you want to create a Microsoft 365 group? Just to put this into some context, a security group has zero collaboration. So just purely for assigning permissions, nothing else. All right. Um, now, you'll notice here, actually, when I clicked on the drop down arrow, it said, do you want to be a Microsoft 365 group or a security group? Now, compare that if you go in through the 365 admin center 
and I add a group. So in here, you'll notice that it now gives me four options. And that's because Microsoft 365 includes Exchange Online. So that's the reason why you get a mail enable security group as well as Microsoft 365 and distribution. So you don't get that with Azure Active Directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this group a name. So I will call this my Sterling HQ. All right. And in my store, I could put in a description here. And this is purely a security group. All right. Now we have a new feature. Um, Azure AD roles can be assigned to this group. So I can add in a role if I want. Now you don't add in the roles here. You add them down here. So in other words, anybody who's a member of this group will automatically get this administrator role. So for example, Teams admins or something like that. Now for the purpose of this demo, I'm not going to bother with that. So I'm just going to say no for now. Now membership type, you have two membership types. You can either assign it and because this is a security group, you can also add in dynamic users as well as dynamic and I should say or dynamic devices. Okay, so either dynamic users or dynamic devices. I'll put that one on hold just now and I'll come back to that one. All right, so for the purpose of this, I'm just gonna say it's assigned. Now, I'm gonna go in and assign a, an owner for this. And the reason for this is because the owner in Microsoft 365 groups has special privileges and uh, no less that they can actually invite guests as well. Now, remember we're talking about collaboration and I said this is a security group, there is zero collaboration. So this is just purely for assigning permissions, okay? So I could just go in here and I can add in a couple of users. Um, so I'm gonna add in just three users here, just for the purpose of security, okay? That's it. So there's no mailbox, there's no interactivity, it's just purely for permissions, all right? Now, um, off I go, and I'm gonna go ahead and create that group. It takes a minute or two uh, to go through. And then basically once we've done that, we can then come back here to the portal. And if I just click a quick refresh button, and you can see that that group has now come in. So here's the Sterling HQ group. So if I just click onto this, um, you can see that indeed it's an assigned group. I can go into the membership list here and I can see I've got my three members uh, and I can all see in the owners, I've got um, Megan who's the owner as well. Um, okay, so that is there. And likewise, if I go back into the 365 admin center and I'm just going to quickly refresh this page. So view and refresh the page. And again, I can scroll right down. And well, actually here, I don't need to. This is good because you can see you've got these various filters. Um, so if I just browse for security groups and scroll down, sure enough, there's my Sterling HQ. Now, as I said, the easiest way to think about this is that security groups have zero collaboration. All right. So bearing that in mind, what's the first level of collaboration you can have? Well, actually there are two options. Um, this next one is a mail enabled security group. So, and it's exactly as it says on the tin. It's a security group with a mailbox. That's it, okay? No, nothing teams, nothing, no calendars, no contacts, nothing shared, just purely a mailbox with a security group. Now, there are actually, just to confuse, not to confuse you anymore, there's actually two versions of this that you could, you could actually have. <clears throat> okay, now for the other version, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Exchange. So this is the Exchange Admin Center, and I'm just gonna log in here, okay. 
So in the Exchange Admin Center, check it out. Look, you can now add in a new shared mailbox, okay? So a shared mailbox is a, is a collaborative group. It's a shared mailbox, but it's not a security group. So you can't assign permissions to it. You understand? Um, so just so you know the difference. So you have got, for example, a mail enabled security group. So it's a mailbox, but you can also assign permissions. And then if you go into Microsoft Exchange, you can create a shared mailbox that's got no security features on it. All right. Why would you have a shared mailbox? Um, you could have a small, um, let's say a small sales department who want to just share a mailbox. And the very cool thing about this, by the way, is that you can upgrade and downgrade mailboxes. So, for example, if I scroll down here, let's say I've got Diego here. And if I go into Diego's mailbox, let's say Diego's leaving the company. He's a pretty good sales guy. Um, what you can do is, well, you've got some choices. You can either change Diego's permissions, and if I go into his permissions, I can obviously give other users the rights to send mail and send as and send on behalf of Diego. But one of the things that's really nice is that if I scroll down here, you can convert this to be a shared mailbox. So if Diego was like your top sales guy, you could share his mailbox with the sales team so that they can still get access. Now, um, once you've converted it to be a shared mailbox, you can also convert it back again. So you can convert it to be a regular mailbox. And that's really helpful, by the way. All right. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, a shared mailbox so that you can do that as I said in Microsoft Exchange. So another level of interactivity then is distribution lists. So a distribution list is a distribution list. It's just a contact list. So nothing else, no other interactivity. Um, it's just purely a contact list. That's it. So now we come to the biggest set of confusion here. And this is the one that this session is really all about. So Microsoft 365 Groups versus Microsoft Teams. So what's so special about Microsoft 365 Groups? Well, um, who can first of all, who can create a Microsoft 365 Group? And the answer is any user can create it. All right. So um, any user you can, for example, I can go here into, let's say, Outlook uh, and you can do this either in Outlook, Yammer, Teams or SharePoint and you can create a group. All right. So I simply scroll down here and you can see I've got groups. I can either create a new group or you can discover a group, join a group. Um, and manage groups. So this might be for, let's say, groups that you've been assigned permissions to. But check it out. What do you get with a Microsoft 365 group? Well, here, if I go into the Marquette project team, you can see that I get a shared mailbox. So great. So if you're a team, you get a shared mailbox. But it's much more than just a shared mailbox. A Microsoft 365 group also gives you a shared document library. So for example, this is SharePoint document libraries. So just like OneDrive, for example, you can, you can share content with your team. You can collaborate on documents. It absolutely rocks. The other thing that you get, you also get a group calendar and even more. You get a OneNote, you get Planner, you also get a SharePoint team site, which rocks, by the way. And again, you can set permissions on that. So again, any user can create this. Um, so again, as an administrator, this is something that you might want to think twice about. All right. So there you have it. The benefits of Microsoft 365 Groups. Now, so we know about the different levels of collaboration. Security, once again, absolutely zero collaboration. Mail enabled security group. I mentioned that it's just a security group with a mailbox. <clears throat> just remember, you can also go in 
to Microsoft Exchange Admin Center and create that shared mailbox with no security. The distribution list, mention that one, and Microsoft 365 Groups, that fully collaborative group. Okay, now here in Microsoft 365 Admin Center, you'll notice that this is a really a nice, a nice interface, by the way. So you can scroll through here. I can see the different types of membership and you can see where, you know, who created the group and so on. Um, now, you'll notice that some of these groups on the subject of Microsoft Teams now, you'll notice that some of these groups have the Teams logo at the side of them. And this is because one of the cool things about Microsoft 365 groups is that they can be extended to become a Microsoft team. Now, I mentioned that the benefits of the group um, are definitely great because you get the shared mailbox, you get um, the whole kind of collaborative uh, experience. So I mentioned that in the, uh, you get the document library, you get the mailbox, you get so much more. Now, so what's the difference between a 365 group and a Microsoft team. So the 365 group just has Microsoft apps. Do you see that? They're just part of Microsoft 365. So how can we then convert this to become a Microsoft team? So one of the things that you can do is when you create that Microsoft group. So for example, if I scroll down here, and um, I'll go into my Sterling HQ. And an actual fact, you'll notice that my uh, Sterling HQ group uh, hasn't appeared. That's the reason, of course, because it's a security group. Now, just a couple of things to let you know. Um, uh, what I'll do is, well, first of all, you can't um, upgrade a security group, okay? So it's, it's just a security group. But you can upgrade a distribution list and a, uh, to become a Microsoft 365 group, all right? And then you can upgrade a Microsoft 365 group to become a team. Let me demonstrate to you. So I'm gonna add a group this time in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. I'm going to choose a Microsoft 365 group, and this time I'm gonna call this my Sterling IT Department. Okay, so this is my, oops, sorry. So Sterling IT department. All right, um, and I'm gonna just click next. Again, I can, I can assign an owner, and the owners have a special significance of which you'll see later. So I'm gonna assign Megan as my owner. So just bring her in. And she can organize membership in the group and things like that. Um, I'm going to click next. And now I can assign some members. Note the word assign here. Remember that. So I'm going to go in here. And who will I bring in? I'll bring in Adele, Alex, Alan. So let's just bring in these guys. I'll bring in Bianca. Let's have Brian. Um, we will bring in Deborah and Delia. Okay, so I'm going to add these users into my group. I'll click next. And the cool thing is you can pretty much have any email address that you want, by the way. And the, the cool thing about this is you can also um, change it. At any time you want to change the email address, you can do that. So you can see that you've got your email at your tenant dot on microsoft.com. Again, you might use your own domain name for this. Now, the privacy of the group, is this public or is it private? Now, this depends on if you want the group to become discoverable. So if it's a public group, um, what's going to happen is in outlook here you can see the discover groups so i can search for a group name and it will be discoverable users can also create new microsoft 365 groups here as well now if you don't want that to be discoverable what you could do is you could make that a private group and then only the members and the owners will have access to that group all right for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to leave it as public. 
Now, I mentioned that groups can be extended to become a Microsoft team. And what this does is specifically, it extends the capabilities of the group to include, are you ready for it? Third party applications, all right? So you can extend the capabilities of the group to include third party apps. Do I have to do this now? No, I can take that checkbox out. I can click next and I can go ahead and create the group. All right, so if I click on close, um, I'll scroll down. It can take a couple of minutes just for this to refresh. By the way, this is perfectly normal. Remember, you're creating something in a data center here. So it can take a few minutes. And you can see, sure enough, we now have the Sterling IT department. You can see its email address. It's cloud-based. It's not a Microsoft team. And the membership is assigned. So Andy, you said earlier that you can upgrade a Microsoft 365 group to a team. I did, that's right. So what I can do is I can go into the team, I can go into the group rather I should say, and in here in its properties, what I'll do is you'll notice that we have a Microsoft Teams tab. Now, you can also change the privacy on this, which is great. Very important, by the way, is this general settings here. So if you are going to invite guests to the group, you definitely want to allow external senders to email that group. So if you don't have that on, it's an internal thing only. Likewise, do you want to send copies of contents and communications to the group? Yeah, you might want that. And again, if you don't want that uh, to show in the address book, you can hide that, okay? So I'm gonna click on Microsoft Team and this is an irreversible action. So once it becomes a team, you can never take that wrapper off, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, are you absolutely sure? Yes, I am, okay. So it's still a Microsoft 365 group, but it's now also a Microsoft Team, okay? So let me show you some of the benefits of being in Teams, right? So just let this finish. Okay, so there we go. It's now uh, completed. So, and you can now see, sure enough, it says that it's a Microsoft Team. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my 365 portal and I'm gonna open up Microsoft Teams and let's see what we've got. So here in Microsoft Teams, you can see that if I go down to my Teams here and then just scroll down, what do we see? Here we have the Sterling IT department and you've got all the benefits of Microsoft 365 groups, but now you've also got the Teams as well. And if I go in here and manage the team, um, we can see that you've got your members, the same members, the same groups, everything is here. One of the things that you'll notice is you've got a general channel by default. So every team gets a general channel. But what you can also do is you can create additional channels as well. So I can go in and I can add a channel and I can call this um, support help desk. Okay. And again, I can say, is it a standard or is it a private channel? Now, why would you want to create a private channel? Maybe for managers or somebody like that. Um, okay, so automatically show the channel to everybody in the channel list. Okay, so I'm gonna click on add. And sure enough, my channel is now created. So what can I do in the channel? So this is, look, look at this. This is third party applications. So not only can I create a new conversation, so I can say, uh, please send a message. Okay, so I can send a message here. I can add GIFs, uh, attachments, files, uh, pictures, whatever I want to bring in. All right. Now, so you've got posts, you've got files. 
Now, the files, it's a SharePoint document library. So very, very similar to the likes of OneDrive. So you get a, a SharePoint document library that the team can share and work with and so on. You get a wiki um, as well. Check it out. We also now can add an additional tab. And you can add anything. Look, check it out. I can add a list. So yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll add a list here. Now, although this is a Microsoft um, channel, uh, sorry, it's, yeah, uh, this is a Microsoft app. I don't know if you've seen this. This is great, by the way. So I can, I can go ahead and create a list. So here, looking at the various templates, we can see that we've got a number of different templates. So again, this is a help desk. So I can go in and I can put in the incidents. So I can put in incidents and say, yep, this looks pretty good. I'm going to add that template. So I'm going to say uh, incident reports. Okay, you can choose a color, uh, whatever you like. So I'll go with that one. It looks quite good. And if I click on create, Sure enough, there we go. I've now got my list. So now when somebody reports a problem, I simply click on new item and check it out. I've got a form to fill in. How cool is that? All right. So that is the, that one. And the other thing, of course, is I mentioned that <clears throat> the benefits of, t of uh, Teams is that you can extend those 365 groups into third-party applications. So check it out. It's all third-party stuff here. Even YouTube, look at this. Fantastic. I want to bring in a training video. So I'm going to bring in YouTube into a channel. So I'm going to add that channel and I can search or paste a link. You know, I might bring in my, um, myself. So if I just do a quick search on myself, let's see what I come up. Hey, look, here we go. So uh, what do I want to learn today? So you might want to bring in um, things like, uh, oh, look, I want to learn all about Azure Active Directory, or I might want to learn more about Microsoft Teams. So I can add this video directly into the channel. That rocks, doesn't it? So you can imagine a support, you might have a training video here. Um, so we've got the training video, you've got, um, as I say, you've got the lists, you've got incident reports. That's how you can extend those channels um, uh, from Teams and also how flexible groups versus teams actually is. Now, just before I leave this, I just want to pop in to manage the team again. So again, I can add members, I can leave the team. You can get a link to the team as well. Um, I can um, hide the team. So if you don't want to see the team and you can also delete it. Now, I mentioned that teams and groups are forever interlinked, did I not? I did. So if I come into the Teams Admin Center now, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back in to just close this down. So I'm going to come into Microsoft 365. I'm going to scroll down and this time I'm going to go into the Teams Admin Center. Um, I'm going to go into Teams and I'm going to manage my Teams. Okay. And let's scroll down and see what we can see. Okay. So here is my Sterling IT department. Shows me that I've got two channels. I've got six members and one owner in there at the moment. I can um, click into that. And you can see I've got all my membership. Um, you can see who's a member and who's an owner. You can change that. You can um, sort that out. Uh, I can change the channels. So you can see uh, I've got my support help desk. They're standard channels. They're not private. I can auto pin these channels as well. So I can pin them to the user's menu. Of course, I can add channels here as well. And you can also delete them. Um, you've then you've got all your different policy settings. So um, this is quite useful. Um, I can again click up here to edit this and you can see you know you might want to change the profile, the logo again just like groups. 
you can change the privacy from public. You can see the member permissions. This is really nice, actually. Look, do you want members to be able to edit sent messages, delete sent messages? Who can delete messages and things like that? Um, so that's the member permissions. Other things that you've got here is guest permissions. So one of the cool things about Teams and groups is that you can invite external guests. And if you've not seen that video that I've done, then check out the guests uh, video. Uh, it's on my channel. Um, we've also got fun settings, GIFs and, and things like that as well. Um, okay, so I can open this channel or open the team in Microsoft Teams. Now, the other thing that I want to do is um, if I just go back into the teams here, so manage the teams. Very interesting. I mentioned that teams are groups and groups are teams. Remember that teams are just an extension of a Microsoft 365 group. What at the end of the day, I decide I no longer require this group or this team. So what you can do is you've got some options. I can archive this, okay? So, and I can say, right, the SharePoint team site, I want to make it read only for members. So at the end of its life, what you can do is you can archive this team. So if I scroll down, you can see that this is now archived. Um, now, don't worry, you can easily go back and I can unarchive that as well. But again, at the end of its life, if you don't need to keep this team, one of the things you might want to do is obviously get rid of it. But look, if I go now and <clears throat> are you sure you want to delete this? I am. Everything that it was is now gone. All right. So the whole thing is now gone. And the gotcha here is there's nowhere to bring it back here. So there's no recovery here. How do I get it back? You can pretty much guess. So if I go back into the admin center and if I scroll up, okay, I'm going to go into deleted groups here. And what do we see? Sure enough, uh, scroll down and I can see that I've actually got my Sterling IT staff. So here is my Sterling IT staff. Again, it's a Microsoft 365 group. I can now restore that group. Yeah, so you, although you can't restore a team, when you restore a group back, everything that that team was is then brought back. And that's the reason I believe that Microsoft have changed this menu from groups. So it now says teams and groups. Now, if I go back into the teams admin center and I'm just going to refresh this page, then if I scroll down, just log back in. If I scroll down here, what we will see is this so if I, you'll see this so there's a little see the exclamation mark it's because it's being restored so again that's just you know a little bit of patience give it a few minutes and it will be back exactly where it was complete with all its members and all of its content all right and that's how you archive and restore teams and groups now I mentioned just the final part that of this presentation, what I want to do is I want to talk about um, the permissions. All right. So a couple of really important settings. Teams are groups. Groups are teams. Remember what I said. So first of all, I'm going to go into the Microsoft 365 Admin Center and I'm going to come into my organizational settings. So in my organizational settings, if I scroll down here, what I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for Microsoft groups. And here they are, Microsoft 365 groups. Look, let group owners add people outside of your organization as guests. So in other words, owners, there is a special administrator role in Azure Active Directory 
called the guest inviter role. So basically, it's granting owners of groups and teams the ability to uh, add guests in. Now, if you don't want that and you want just administrators to invite, you can take that checkbox out. All right. Let guest group members access group content. All right. Again, very important. Um, and another couple of important settings. I did mention that anyone can create Microsoft 365 groups. Oh my goodness, can you imagine the mayhem? So if you're a little bit worried about that, then all you need to do is come over here into Microsoft uh, Azure. So if I go back into groups in Azure here, and we have some settings here, all right? So first of all, I can see the same groups here. Yes, I've got my same groups. Um, I'll just refresh that page. And I've got exact, remember, groups are teams, teams are groups. So if I scroll down here, um, you can see I've got all my groups. You've got three very important settings here, all right? So in the general tab in Azure AD, what we can see specifically Microsoft 365 groups. So again, users can create 365 groups in Azure portals, API, or through PowerShell. So if you don't want that, you can switch that off, all right? Now, administrators, of course, can still create the groups, but not users. This is really important, by the way, all right? Now, another really nice feature is group expiration. So um, people are terrible at creating groups and teams and then just putting one or two items in them and just forgetting about them. And eventually you'll just sit there with like hundreds of stale groups. So what you can do is you can put a time limit, a lifetime on this. And I put my email address in here, well, my uh, user anyway. And you can say, I want to expire groups for all groups, probably not, or selected groups. So I can go in here and I can say, yeah, if I type in Sterling here, my Sterling IT staff, team and group, I want to keep for six months. At the end of that six months, if nobody is using this, then AI kicks in, artificial intelligence kicks in and it will then delete that group, all right? So again, I can say, yeah, that's great. I want to uh, add that. So after that time, it will then automatically delete that group. All right. Now, um, that is a fantastic feature, by the way, and it saves you a lot of time. Now, very quickly, group naming policy, you can add in any blocked words. So if you don't want any naughty words in your group names, you can add those in. And you've also got the ability to do what we call a group naming policy. So remember, groups are teams as well. So this will also go forward in creating team names. Okay. And you can have a prefix or a suffix. So prefix, you know, Sterling IT, Sterling Sales. Um, you know, suffix might be marketing, Sterling, production, Sterling, and so on. Okay, so very, very useful uh, features there. Okay, um, so there we go. Just a little bit about teams and groups and how they interact with each other. So there you have it. I hope it's cleared the mystery up of teams versus groups. Okay, thank you so much for stopping by and for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. If you've enjoyed it, please give me a big thumbs up. I, I, I really do appreciate it. And if you've not subscribed, go ahead, click on that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on any future presentations. Okay, so you take care and stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks for dropping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and click on the subscribe button and ring that bell and you won't miss a thing. See you next time.